Top 10 HIV treatment and prevention advances in the past decade. Let's check this out. Number one advancement, HIV treatment for all. I have to agree that is a huge advancement to what ultimately saved my life and continues to save my life. Let's go on to number two. Treatment as prevention, especially in relation to U equals U. As many as you know, I am not a fan of U equals U. I am more of a get tested, know your status advocate. I will always be that way. Just because I think it's a better way to live your life. I don't think you should wait until you're in a situation where you need medical information intervention when you should always know your status every year number three the dawn of prep prep is great it is a medication that someone can take that if they are exposed it can uh, usually stop the virus from ever replicating and keep them from catching the virus. PrEP was a great advancement. I think it needs to be more widely used. I think more people need to know about it as it's still relatively unknown outside of the HIV community. When that happens and it's talked about in schools, then I will feel better about PrEP. Number four is how HIV treatments have gotten simpler. And what used to be my original regimen was over 22 pills a day. And I'm down now to two. So that has really, really changed the game. It's made everything a lot easier. It's a lot easier to pop two pills, be good, and move on with the day without a lot of worry and a lot of headache. 22 pills a day was a headache. Number five. The integrase era. First HIV integrase inhibitor in Centris was approved in 2007. The integrase era truly arrived in the past decade as latest HIV treatment guidelines and regimens recommended for most people starting treatment, including this class of antivirals. Next generation integrase inhibitors are highly potent and come with few side effects, or so it was thought. In 2018, researchers warned that dilutivir typica, also including Tremic, Julical, Julisa, and Devano, was linked to an increased risk of birth effects. Although these fears were unproven, more recently new integrase inhibitors have been linked to weight gain. Everything's going to have side effects. Every med, it doesn't matter if it's HIV, if it's what it's for. There's side effects. Nothing's perfect. The fact that there are meds to begin with is incredible. And it's life-changing, and it saved millions of lives. Number six, C. An easy cure for Hep C. Never had to deal with Hep C. Never had it. So I uh, 
good job for that, I guess. I don't really have anything good or bad to say there. HIV cure ups and downs. Every year there's another company, there's another rumor that there's going to be a cure, there's going to be a cure, there's going to be a cure. And they always drop. There's been a couple people that have been cured, but it's through different really tough medical procedures and some were flukes. But there is no cure for HIV. So do not get wrangled into that lie. There is no cure. Currently. Eight. People with HIV growing older. This is a topic that really scares me and worries me. The advent of effective antiviral treatments have led to a dramatic reduction in mortality and a rise in the age of the HIV population. Today, nearly half of all people living with HIV in the United States are 50 and older. As deaths due to age-related causes have dropped, HIV-positive people are now facing a host of age-related conditions such as cardiovascular disease, which I also live with, <laughs> and cancers that appear to occur at younger ages compared with HI-negative people. This may be due to chronic inflammation even in people that are well-controlled virus, as well as the lingering effects of more toxic early antiretrovirals. In recent years, the needs of long-term survivors are being increasingly recognized. I am one of the advocates that pushes for that at every opportunity. I may be only 36, but physically, my body is a lot older because I have fought this virus for over 36, for 36 years. And that ages you. <laughs> Number nine. The opioid e epidemic. I don't have any problems with opioids. I know that drug use and STDs are very, well, they tie together immensely. And there's a lot of different practices going on around the country to work with these ongoing problems. There's needle exchanges. There's different intervention programs, and they're all great. They're all working to, towards the same goal. And that's what we need, is everybody working towards the same goal. Number 10, final one. Long-acting HIV treatment. Another thing I am very, very interested in. One long-awaited advance expected in late 2019 2019 did not make it under the wire. The FDA delayed the approval, approval of the first long-acting injectable antiretroviral regimen, Canuvra. Can, the decision was concerned about two-drug regimen chemistry. I believe that has been released now. And you can get on that. And I am very, very interested in that. It's one shot every eight weeks. Would love that. Meds done. One shot, eight weeks. Yes, please. Anyways, guys, that is, uh, this is a start of what's going to be a series of me following on HIV news and keeping you up to date, giving me my opinions on the news, what's happening in the world of HIV, all of that stuff. I'm going to become way more active. We're going to get a lot more done. We're going to do a lot more with YouTube. Remember to subscribe, hit the like button, share this video. All that helps with the algorithms. 
helps me get seen. And once again, thanks for your time. Direct out. <laughs>